So this project is part of the two two by four challenge that my podcast, The Modern Maker Podcast, is putting on. It's a show I do every week with Chris Salamone from Four Eyes Furniture and Ben Ueda from Homemade Modern. If you haven't checked it out, go check out the links in the description. Now, the whole idea of the contest is you build anything you want out of two 2x4s, and there's going to be more information at the end. So I got into my scrap 2x4 pile and started making a blank for a guitar body. Here, I'm gluing it up in halves. That way, I can run it through the planer. My planer isn't wide enough to get the whole body, so I figured I'd do the majority of the cleaning up before I put the two halves together. Save me a little bit of effort. Once I had it all glued up, I came back with the belt sander to make sure everything was nice, clean, and flat. Be sure and get a straight edge here, that way you know your body doesn't have any warp to it. Now this template is available on the written article for this project, so there will be a link in the description. I made it using a software called Inkscape. Essentially all I did was I got a Telecaster template and a Jazzmaster template and overlaid them. I kept all the routing templates for the Telecaster and all of the outline for the Jazzmaster. And that's how you get an offset Telecaster. So I feel like I should probably back up here a little bit and say this isn't exactly a tutorial, it's more of a follow along as I build, simply because this is my first really guitar project. All of the electronics for this and hardware came from a Grizzly kit that I bought for about 150 bucks a couple years ago. Now this guitar obviously doesn't look great, it doesn't play great, so I thought now's a good opportunity to experiment with stuff. So I'm taking apart all of the electronics and all of the wiring that I have to clip. You can see me taking notes. That way I'm sure to be able to get everything back where it needs to be in the new guitar. One of the nice things about using the Grizzly kit is I could use it to set the depth for all of my routing. Here I'm using it to set the depth for the neck, which I almost forgot to drill all the holes for before I routed off the template. Now like I mentioned, everything here wasn't perfect. If I were to do this again, one of the main things is I would have made sure that my neck pocket is really, really snug. Mine isn't perfect here, which made the neck go on a tiny bit crooked, which affected everything later on. Everything still plays great, but it's something to keep in mind if you're doing this yourself. Routing the rest of the pockets was really pretty easy. I had a couple spots where I had to use a fortuner bit because my router didn't go deep enough to fit all the electronics in, but hey, you gotta make stuff work. So one of the nice things about this kit is that most of the parts are just gonna go on there fine, all except for the pick guard. It's shaped for a Telecaster, not a Jazzmaster. At first, I thought a curve on the bottom would look good, but then that totally conflicted with the curve on the top of the pick guard. So I settled with a straight line, and I just cut that out on my bandsaw. Once it was all cut, I cleaned it up at the disc sander, and I also put a 45 degree chamfer to match the rest of the pick guard. It actually ended up looking really nice. So then I could go ahead and belt sand off my template and sand with a hundred grit. All right, so I'm pretty tired of sanding. I don't know what it is. I just don't feel like doing it today. And I've always had the idea of making a road worn guitar, which if you don't know what that is, it's where you take pretty much a nice guitar and make it look like it's been toured in and has had quite a long life. Now I would never be able to do that to a nice guitar that I'd spend a lot of money on, but I figured since I'm using kit electronics and a body made out of scrap wood, there's not a better time to try. So I'm actually really excited about the idea of doing this. So I started by sanding to 100 grit, but I'm gonna stop and move to white paint. Once I put on a few coats and the paint had dried, I let it cure overnight. Then I got a pencil out and I marked all of the spots where I thought the guitar would be worn at. Now Google search is a really big tool here, that way you can actually see real guitars that have been worn and kind of replicate what they're doing. So I just got out a razor blade and I started scraping at the paint lightly. And as you go, it'll eventually just take off that paint and, well, make it look distressed. A few of the main parts I focused on was where your forearm rests on the body of the guitar, of course above the pick guard and behind the bridge where you adjust the height of the strings. Another good spot is on the back of the guitar where your belt buckle will rub against it. That usually leaves a lot of marks as well. 
And once I kind of had it all done, I got some clear coat and put on a couple coats of that. Putting the guitar back together was pretty straightforward, everything except for the bridge. Now, like I mentioned before, the neck wasn't exactly straight, so I had to make a new reference for where my bridge needed to sit, which made this little gap that I'm pointing at. I could have filled it with some stucco or some putty, but I chose just to leave it. This was an experimental guitar, so I figured I might as well play into that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This project was a ton of fun, and the video itself was a lot of fun to make too, so that was really cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Building a guitar for the second time really now was a lot of fun. The first one was a kit, like I mentioned, so I really didn't do anything. This time, I built the body, and it kind of gave me the confidence now to where I think I can really build one really nice. This was sort of the stepping stone to get me into actually being able to build a legit guitar, which, I think I'm gonna do here pretty soon. I know I made a couple mistakes, but it's playable, which is awesome, and I think it looks really, really cool, so I'm pumped. This project is part of the two two by four challenge that I'm doing with my podcast, The Modern Maker Podcast. Essentially, like I mentioned before, is just build anything you want out of two two by fours, or primarily two two by fours. Obviously, you can use parts and hardware that are outside of that to complete your project. Entries are open until June 1st, so there's still plenty of time to get one in if you want to, even though there's not a ton of time. To enter, all you have to do is tag Modern Maker Podcast on a post of the project with the hashtag 22x4challenge. That's how we find them, and that's how well we know you enter. We're gonna be doing a little video showcasing all of the projects that we like the most, and if you have a project video that you wanna show off, be sure and email us or tag us in a link to it. That way we can see that too, and be able to share it. If you're new to the channel, I wanna say welcome, and please consider subscribing if you liked this project for more stuff like it. And if you have any questions on this project, be sure and leave me a comment below, and I'll try and answer as many as I can. So thanks a lot, guys, for watching, and we'll see you next week on Modern Builds.